Donald and Douglas didn't mind what work they did. This meant they often took tracks, as the other engines detested them. However, even the twins needed reprieve from goods. Pulling coaches was a welcome change. One morning, Donald brought a stopping train to Tidmouth Station. He was in good spirits, and the coaches hummed happily behind him. Halting at the platform, he saw some workmen near the signal head. The looks like trouble, he sighed. The station master walked up. The signal's faulty. The men are working as quickly as they can. You should be clear to leave soon. Sorry about this, Donald. Can it be helped, sir? Said Donald. Do not worry. I'll make up time doing the line. The station master smiled and walked away. Donald was just about to close his eyes for a rest. When? Should have known trouble would follow that engine. When Donald first arrived, he collided with the Tidmouth signal box due to slippery rails. The box was swiftly repaired, and the fat controller forgave him. But the signalman hadn't. He was cross over the damage done and glared coolly whenever Donald passed. He'd come to check on the workman's progress, but started talking loudly to them when he saw Donald. Always skulking around like a black cat. First my box, and now my signals. If he doesn't smarten up, he'll remember the day he came to this railway. Just then... The signal dropped, the workmen cheered, and the guards whistle blew. The driver hurried the train away, but Donald was furious. Unbelievable, he grumbled that night. He'd hink a cause an accident every day, acting we could control the signals. Did he ever? He's awful, sighed Douglas. Jeez me and Urfa, why never a pass, until he realizes I'm not you. I never did like that signalman, added James. He sulks more than the trucks. He was a curmudgeon long before you came, remarked Henry. Pay no mind, Donald. He'll give it up in due time. Donald wasn't convinced. Whenever he went near the box, he felt the signalman's gaze fixed upon him. He could hardly shunt without receiving complaints. He worked carefully and held his tongue, but his patience was wearing thin. Next morning, Thomas was at the platform, waiting to travel back up the branch line. His signal dropped just as Donald arrived from the opposite direction with empty trucks. He whistled hello, catching the signalman's attention. Just my luck, he muttered. In his distraction, the signalman didn't realize he'd pulled the wrong lever. Annie's wheels had just cleared the points when they shifted beneath the train. Thomas hadn't noticed, but Donald had. Stop! Stop! He whistled frantically. Startled, Thomas braked, but not fast enough. Clarable's front wheels started down the siding. There was a bump, a shriek, and a crunch. The train stopped, with Clarable sitting crooked and derailed. My poor axles. She wailed. The signalman descended from the box just as Thomas's guard stormed over. What are you playing at? He fumed. You're working points, not circus rides. I was doing just fine. Until the black cat came creeping in, grumbled the signalman. Donald could stay silent no longer. I didn't know any railway where engines control points or signals. He retorted. That's your Joab. Don't tell me how to do my job. You're quite good at being a bad omen. Let me tell you. Ahem. The signalman turned. It was the fat controller. Sir, I report to my office at once, interrupted the fat controller. I'm quite interested in hearing how Donald's mere presence led to this. He motioned to the accident. Thomas's crew was trying to pacify the angry passengers. Ashamed, the signalman walked silently towards the station. I'm sorry if I caused any trouble, sir, began Donald. You did nothing of the sort, assured the fat controller. Without your warning, Thomas may have had a worse accident. I trust you can assist with the cleanup. Donald gladly obliged. He and the workmen soon put everything right, and Thomas hurried off with a thankful whistle. Satisfied, a fat controller strolled to his office. I feel your troubles are over and done with, old boy. The driver winked at Donald. He was right. The signalman failed to convince the fat controller of his innocence and was relocated to another box on a much quieter part of the island. Thankfully, the new signalman at Tidmouth was much friendlier to the engines. Donald was relieved. There was no talk of him being a black cat ever again.